welcome to this week's video. Join me in a cup of coffee or tea, drink of your choice, and let's have a chat about 2024 plans. My name's Marianne and I am part-time boater. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I hope that you enjoy what I have to offer and if we have already met, welcome back. I thought I would take the time to wish you a happy new year I hope your Christmas season has gone well. Mine has been very busy. And so today's video is a little bit on the late side. As you can see, I've got my coffee. I hope you're sitting comfortably because we're going to have a little chat. It only seems like yesterday that I was sitting down talking to you about me getting some letters through the post telling me that I was due to retire in 2023. And I wasn't ready. Now, January 2024, I received the same letters about a month ago saying I'm due to retire. So it is now imminent and I have to do some preparation and some planning. And I've been thinking about it for quite a while. Are you in this position as well where you are approaching retirement age or planning for a retirement? Let me know in the comments if that's you. There are about seven months before I retire and there are a few things that I would like to achieve in my retirement. So the first, the first one is that I would like to spend more time with Peter and to be on the narrowboat a bit more. I would like to cruise the country with him. I would like to see more places, meet more people, do some wonderful activities like visit stately homes, parks, gardens, shopping centres, that's my thing, not his. Lots of coffee shops, that's his thing as well as mine. And generally see a bit more of England. I would also like to create more music. If you watched my video of maybe a month or so back, you'd see that I have a new guitar. And I'm just longing to sit down, have the time to create more music with it. I would also like to create more music on the piano while I'm still at home, because once I move on to a boat, I won't have one. So that may be something that I will need to make a priority, creating music on my piano. I will take a guitar and a violin onto the boat. I will have those at my disposal for creating music whilst afloat. Another thing that I would like to do is to resurrect some of the craft activities that I used to do. I actually studied knitting and fashion design in college when I was 18. And I bought the whole setup of knitting machine, ribber, colour changer, all of those things. And I promised myself that I wouldn't get rid of them. But instead, when I retire, which is imminent, I would get them out and I would start creating fabrics. I love creating fabrics or well, I used to do it a lot on my knitting machine when I was at college but I haven't done it in such a long time. I'm not really a hand knitter, I know how to hand knit but it's not quite the same. It's not as fast and I don't feel I can be as creative with knitting needles as I can be with a knitting machine. So I'm really looking forward to doing something with that. I also like doing things like cross stitch, painting, drawing, sketching, all of these things. And I just don't make time for them. Notice I said make time. I think when you want to do these sorts of activities, it is something that you have to make time for. I make time for lots of other things at the moment, like work, meeting up with friends, spending time with family, going shopping with my daughter is a big thing. But for my crafts, I don't really make time to do that. So I'm looking forward to maybe getting those things out and resuming those sorts of activities that I used to enjoy. The other thing I will have to focus on while I'm afloat is maintaining contact with friends and family. If I'm going to be at the far end of the country, my friends aren't going to be there with me. They'll be back in my hometown. So it'll be a question of keeping in touch with them via text messages, Zoom calls, and maybe some invitations to the boat as well. 
I know that they're all very interested in seeing it. Some of them have already, but it would be really nice to have them visit the boat wherever it may be. It might get them a destination to head for when they have a long weekend free. So those are the sorts of things I'm looking forward to. And here's a big thing. Since lockdown, I have not been walking towpaths and keeping myself fit. I've neglected that. And it's telling on me. My knees are a bit dodgy, my back's twinging. Now people may say, oh, you're just getting older, you've got to expect these things. But I'm thinking, no, I don't want to accept these things. If I can look after myself, then I should be able to have flexible knees and joints and not have a twinging back. But I'm not prioritising that. And I think that I need to do that. Prior to lockdown, I was walking the towpaths, doing the locks. I was actually quite fit and I felt good. And even though I say it myself, I thought I looked pretty good too in some of the clothes that I was wearing. That's all changed now. And I need to change it back to what it was and get fit again. Now, a lot of people make that resolution come the new year and they join gyms and good luck to them. I hope they do very, very well. But joining a gym isn't really something that I have done year on year. It's not somewhere that I frequent. I do dancing to keep fit. I need to do more of that. I enjoy that. And I need to walk towpaths. That's the next thing. Those are my goals really for my retirement. More time on the boat with Peter, seeing new parts of the country and the canal network, relearning my crafts, maintaining family connections and friend connections and getting fit. Now, before I can do all of that, I've still got some time to work. So do I defer all those things or do I set things in motion to get started? Well, there's things that I have to do. Excuse me while I have a slurp of this while it's still hot. If you're heading into retirement or any major changes, you have to prepare. And this is what I plan to do within the next seven months. I need to reduce what I have. I live in a three to four bedroom house. I say to four because I've had a conversion done and it's very small, but children can sleep there when they come. The grandchildren, I mean, can sleep there when they come. So three to four bedroom house. I've lived here for over 30 years. I've raised four children here and I have a lot of things. My older children, the two older girls, have taken all their things. I still have one son and one daughter living with me. Well, I say living with me. I've got a daughter living with me and my son returns next week and he's going to be staying with me. I'm really excited for that. But with him comes all his things. And every time they've come back from uni, I've had all their uni stuff with them. So this house is pretty crammed. I need to now rationalise what I have in the house, reduce what I have and want less and need less, especially if I'm going to be on a boat. Does any of this resonate with you? Are you living in a very big house and you have to downsize or you want to downsize or just reduce your things so that your children or your loved ones don't have to do anything with them when you're sadly gone? My daughter commented yesterday that if I were to go tomorrow, she would be the one left to declutter this house and she wouldn't have the capacity to go through every little thing. She wouldn't know what was important to me. And that did bring it home to me that I need to do this to make their lives easier in the future. Not only that, if I'm on the boat, I'm leaving a house behind where potentially my two younger children will be living and sharing the space. It needs to be easy for them to live in the house. So one of the things that I've thought about, thanks to my daughter making me think about it, is maybe to create more of a house share. So 
kitchen cupboards, for instance, empty them all out, get rid of the stuff that we don't use, don't want, don't need, and allocate them each a space so that they can have their things in there. It can They can take ownership of it. They can do their own cooking if they wish, or they can cook for me, I don't mind. They're really very good cooks. And really make the space our own. So that's something I need to think about and maybe implement in the near future. My son arrives this week, I won't land that on him straight away, but it has to come, I think, this month so that we can all move forward in the house as a house share. My children are no longer little anymore, they're grown up. And I need to readjust my thinking to living with two other adults and not small children that I have to care for and look after. Obviously as a mum, I will do that anyway, but I have to give them their independence. They've had it all this time and they need to reclaim it when they're in this house. So I've got a, a huge mental adjustment to make. Moving on to the boat, I'm not going to be able to take a fraction of what I have in this house with me. I've got a few clothes on the boat already, a few sketching things, and that's it. So if I can manage whenever I'm on the boat with such a few amount of things, then I should be able to do the same here in my house. So let's see if I can achieve the wanting less, the needing less, and the creating of more space. And leaving the home in a fit state for my children to live in together if I'm not here. And also to make it a great space for me to come back to, because that's the other thing I'm going to be doing, is creating a water-land balance. At the moment, I spend more of my time here on the land and very little time on the boat because Peter's now quite far north. It's not going to be easy for me to get to him. But when I'm on the boat, that's got to flip. I'll spend most of the time on the boat and then come back here to the house periodically to visit my family and my friends. And I want a nice space to come back to. So over this next seven months, my videos are going to consist of my preparation for moving onto the boat. I hope you will find it interesting. Perhaps you're going on a similar journey, downsizing to a smaller house, moving to a different country, changing your lifestyle. Perhaps you're even thinking about buying a narrowboat and moving onto it. If you are, I hope you will find my journey interesting maybe even helpful. I know that I'm going to be facing a lot of challenges mentally because I'm attached to a lot of the things in this house, but I'm hoping that it's going to be a positive journey. And I hope you'll join me and cheer me on. I need a lot of help. And the reason I'm putting this out there for you is to make myself accountable to you. I'm making this promise that I'm going to go through the house, remove what I don't need, don't want, doesn't fit, doesn't serve me anymore, doesn't bring me joy. In the words of Marie Kondo, whatever I keep has to serve a purpose. So I hope you will follow me. I hope that if this isn't quite your thing, that you'll be patient with me because there will be more boating and me on the boat with Peter and Flan to come. Somebody asked me what's a Flan, a comment last week. Flan is the cat, the third crew member when I'm on board, the second crew member when I'm not. And he's a delight and a bane to Peter. A delight because he's company, he's quite affectionate and a bane when Peter's trying to work on the computer and he rubs his face all over the screen edge and changes apps and moves screens and turns things off. Perhaps you have a cat like that. So, yeah, if I'm going to be living on the boat in order to get there, I need to make some drastic changes. So please stay with me, join me on my journey and 
if you aren't interested in decluttering, in getting rid of stuff, in moving things around, making changes within a house, if that's not your thing, then please be patient. And when I'm back on the boat, I hope that you will enjoy my future videos that I will put out under those circumstances on the water. I've still got my coffee. Do you have yours? Mm. Very nice. So I think that's enough of a ramble. I've covered everything that I need to today. And I'm sorry this video might be a little bit late. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following me, if you have. And if you're new here, and this is the first time that we've met, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a lot. And I have to say a big thank you to all my subscribers because this week, after three years or almost three years of putting out videos, I have reached 500 subscribers. That's 500 subscribers. I'm so chuffed. It may not be a lot in the grand scheme of things, but I'm very aware that each one of those numbers is a person that has taken the time to click, click subscribe. Each one of those people have watched my videos at some point or another. And that person is you. So thank you very much. And I look forward to bringing you more content in the future. So until next week and next week's video, Happy New Year.